Every year when we celebrate this feast, I'm reminded how much I love it, the Feast of the Holy Family. I think it's very practical and very personal all at the same time. It's practical, all of us have or have come from a family, but it's also very personal because our part in helping our family to be a holy family uh, is incredibly personal. It relates directly to our life and the life of our family. St. Paul, in that beautiful second reading, I love that from Colossians, he's kind of talking about getting dressed. But he says what you should put on is the virtues. He says, put on, it's like, think of yourself in, in your bedroom getting dressed, but here's what he wants you to put on. He said, first of all, put on compassion. In other words, give the other guy a break. Put yourself in his shoes. Put yourself in your mom's shoes, your dad's shoes, your brother's shoes, your sister's shoes. Then he talks about kindness. Kindness is the oil for all family life. In fact, for all relational life, kindness. Then he talks about humility. He says, put on humility. The more we grow in humility, the less anger and the less impatience we will bring to our relationships, family or otherwise. They're in direct opposite proportion. Grow in humility, less impatience, less anger, because a lot of that is rooted in our ego, in our own pride. Then he talks about two, I think, very, very uh, wonderful virtues. He says, bear with one another. You know that strange uncle or aunt you have that uh, you never know what they're going to say or do at a family gathering. Paul says, bear with one another. Give them the break, kind of. And then, to me this is key, forgive one another. No family life is possible without forgiveness. All of us are going to mess up. All of us are imperfect. All of us are going to need forgiveness. Everybody in the family circle. Without forgiveness, we won't be able to keep our family together. It's a key family virtue. Forgive one another. And then he says, over all of them, put on love. Uh, I, I love this image. As you probably know, the stole that the priest wears is a symbol of his authority as a priest. But the chasuble that goes on top of that is a symbol of charity or love. In other words, over your authority as a priest, be sure to cover that with love, with charity. And it's true for all of us as well, not just for priests. Over all things, put on love. It's important to tell your family you love them. I've had so many conversations, you know, my mom or my dad never says I love you, or I never say it to my siblings, whatever it is. It's key. Tell your family members, I love you. We can never hear that too often. It's a wonderful gift we can give each other right within our family. Pope Benedict calls a family a school. A school, he says, where we learn to give and receive love. Think of your family as a, a school, a little school you're, you're uh, running right there at your home address. Um, there's a famous French philosopher, Rousseau. I'm sure you've heard of him. Um, he didn't believe we needed schooling. He believed, he, he believed in what he called the noble savage. He said, what's making us bad is our human interactions. He said, if you could take a baby and put him on a desert island with nobody there and let him grow up, there would be this beautiful, happy, wonderful, noble savage. And he said, it's the adults that are ruining them. Clearly, he never had any two-year-olds. <laughs> because the truth is, love is a virtue, but it's also an art that we learn. We're not born with it. We learn it through the kindness and good example of others. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, grandparents, friends. We have to learn to love. Love includes a death to self, an unselfishness, which does not come easily or naturally to any of us. But as we practice it, Love becomes its own reward because we receive love from those whom we are loving. So uh, with all respects to Rousseau, uh, that really isn't the way it is. God gives us a family so we can learn those virtues. A family is a school for virtue. Our faith tells us that families will be stronger the more each family member falls in love with God. And that that's what makes our family holy. When faith uh, and uh, love for God bind us together. So the holy families 
The strong families are those where mom, dad, brothers, sisters, all shares a common love for God. Um, I think it was Aristotle that said, um, friendship will endure to the extent the two friends fall in love with a transcendent third. Wow, what's that mean, okay? In other words, it's not just a focus on the two friends, but we love a transcendent third. What's our transcendent third? God, our Lord, our God. When we as a family fall in love with God, look out, boy, that's a dynamite family. That's, that family is gonna go places because they share this common love, not just for one another, but for this transcendent third, which is going to transform their family. Um, it's important to remember, I think this is a pretty telling uh, and tender point. God the Father chose family life as a way that his son Jesus would enter the world. Jesus is God. He didn't have to be born. He didn't have to spend nine months in Mary's womb. He didn't have to go through all, the, the, every, he did everything a, a normal child would do. But God, he could have just shown up full grown on the Sea of Galilee and taken it from there. But he didn't. God the Father chose to have Jesus, the Son, be born into a human family. A special family, granted, but a human family nevertheless. In fact, they had their struggles, didn't they? Remember, Jesus is 12 years old. He stays behind in the temple. Mary and Joseph finally find him and said, Son, why did you do this to us? We've been searching for you in sorrow. So in that sense, it wasn't a perfect upbringing for him either. Um, but yet God the Father said, I want you to be born in a human family. I want you to live out your life with all the ups and downs of a human family. It's true that none of our families are perfect. Can you imagine with nine boys, growing up with nine boys? My mother went straight to heaven, right? <laughs> there was always something grow going on. We never had a boring life. Uh, I remember, especially mom, once in a while dad, but especially mom would say, we just want you boys to love each other, which clearly meant there was something that preceded that, right? <laughs> something not too loving, you know? Then I remember mom said, we just want you boys to love each other. Families are not perfect. Uh, now, the good news is, growing up, we do love each other, but I'm sure we went through some rocky times to get there. Um, happily, for our family and for every family, God wants to enter our imperfect families. He doesn't say, get perfect, and then I'll show up. Not at all. Right now, our Lord wants to enter every one of our families and to give us the strength and the grace we need to form a holy family. Today, it's an excellent day to ask God to be with your family, to help you grow in holiness. Um, before meals today, you know, yes, pray for the new year and pray for God's blessings in the new year, but then invite God into your family. Say, Lord, all throughout 2018, be the center of our family. Uh, a cardinal over in Rome wrote a beautiful talk, I was reading parts of it recently, and he had a powerful image for the task that families face in our modern culture today. He said this, he said, in Europe, during the collapse of the Roman Empire, the Benedictine monasteries kept the faith alive. And what they did can be and needs to be done today by believing families who live out their faith in an often anti-Christian world. It says a lot, doesn't it? We need, we need the example and the virtues of a believing family like never before to be the light for our world. Um, maybe an idea for your family for this New Year's celebration today. When you get your family together. First of all, thank God for this past year. Just go through the year with your family. Um, how was our Lord with you this year? In your joys, in your struggles, in your sorrows. Let everybody share where they saw the presence of God in, the, in your family this year. And then, secondly, what are your hopes for the coming year? What is God doing in your family? Where is he leading you as a family? Look together toward the future. Also, uh, I think it's important to thank God for the family that is the church 
and it is our parish. I am grateful to you for all that you do to make our parish family such a wonderful family. And nobody can say, I have, a, I have no family. Somebody says, you know what, I'm a widow, I'm a widower, I don't have any children, I don't have a family. Oh yes you do, oh yes you do. Your parish is your family. Your, our, we, the church in all her documents says, it never just says the parish, it says the parish family. That's where we are to be, with God as our head. That's how we call to be for one another. So to you and all of your loved ones, blessed feast of the Holy Family, and may the virtues of the Holy Family grow and grow in every one of our families as well.